Hi, I'm Kelly from Outer Limits Open Road, and today I'm going to show you how to make these spheres full of rocks. They're resin spheres filled with rocks that I've collected on my travels. We travel around the country in our truck camper, our Sears truck camper named Lucidity Base, and everywhere we go, we like to collect little souvenirs, little tidbits, and rocks are one of my favorite things to collect. So as I've created this rock collection, I've tried to figure out what to do with them to showcase them. And I started putting them in these little resin balls so that you can hold them in your hand and enjoy all of the different rocks. Most of my rocks are from Lake Michigan, but this fall we did a tour of Lake Huron all around the state of Michigan. And I got a lot of amazing rocks from Lake Huron, especially a lot of fossils, granite, quartz, Petoskey stones and some amazing things. The first thing to know about these rocks is that they look very dull right now because they're out of the water and they're dry. And the peculiar thing about the lake rocks is once you get them wet, they look amazing. So they're going to look great when they're in the resin ball. You'll need a few ingredients for this project, but they're not terribly expensive. So the first thing and the primary thing that you'll need is a crystal clear resin or epoxy. And you want to make sure that it's a two part and that it's self leveling and that you get the kind that is intended to be used in molds with some thickness because a lot of the more popular ones are only intended for maybe a quarter inch or a very thin pour but I am going to be filling this mold so you can see they're they're quite thick this one's for sure an inch thick and I've got one that's quite a bit larger than that so make sure in the description that it tells you that it can be used um, to a certain thickness and that that will match your your molds. I will link um, this one on Amazon below. Then you'll need some spherical molds. These are just some two-part molds that clip together and I'm going to end up pouring in the one side and let that set overnight or almost a day and then I'm going to stuff rocks in there and then pour resin in the top to create the sphere. In order to mix the resin, you'll need just some plastic disposable cups because you don't want to use any of your good cups or anything. You could use a silicone cup if you've got it. Uh, I got these ones with gradations on them, which is really nice. And then I have also two little, some little disposable mixing cups because I need to pour each part of the hardener and have the exact same amount. I can't stress that enough. If you have a little bit more of the hardener versus uh, the other, the resin, uh, it is not going to turn out. So you want to make sure that you have something where you can measure two amounts that are exactly the same. I'm going to stir them up and then pour them together into the major mixing cup. And you'll need also something like a, uh, a little wooden stick for mixing it. And then finally, I've got a little bit of alcohol in a spritzer bottle here that will help eliminate any of the bubbles. I'm using the back side of a silicone mat here. This is just a little drying mat and I'm using the back side because it's silicone. You can go get silicone mats at the craft store and if you get the ones that are specifically made for crafts like clay and resin they're going to be really expensive. So if you can find just a dish mat that's silicone that will work just great for your purposes. So I'm just going to take a variety of rocks. I'm not really thinking too hard about it. As I put them in there I want to kind of make sure the best side is facing out so that we don't lose any of that amazing color and beauty of these rocks but for the but for the most part I really can't I can't worry about it too much some of it's going to get covered up but still they were just rocks that I picked up on the lake shore and uh, this will give them a chance to be seen by a lot of people so probably not going to fill it up I don't like that one's too big I'm not going to fill it up too much just right to the top of this little mold that little hole is the entire resin ball is going to come out that little hole when it's done. So it's not precious. It's actually 
uh, quite versatile and flexible. So once you've got all of your molds, the bottom parts of your molds filled up, then you're ready to mix up your resin. You are probably going to get some resin on your hands, so it does suggest wear gloves, but I find it very difficult to wear with them, uh, wear them and be able to craft. So you're going to use soap and water to clean up, but have a paper towel handy to help out. All right, so now I've got the exact same amount of each of these, and I'm just going to give the individual ones a little bit of a stir. Now you don't want to be too vigorous in your stirring because you don't want to introduce a lot of air and have air bubbles. You will have some air bubbles. You're hoping they're going to come to the surface and that you're going to be able to get them with the alcohol. Stir that one. And I'm using an old stirrer here. I reuse my stirrers one end and then I use the other end when that one's dry. These individually are very sticky, so that's what you'll notice at first. But when you put them together, they're going to create the resin. So I want to get them in the cup here, both of them. And so I'm going to use the stick here to, as sort of a spatula to make sure that I get every last bit of that down into the cup so I can stir it together. I've put A and B on these little first cups that I'm using uh, because I learned that when I go back and if I want to reuse my cup because maybe I don't have enough epoxy, uh, I often um, will mix up which cup is which. So I absolutely would recommend making sure that you identify them so that they, you know which one of these bottles that container held. All right, so now that I've got these together, I'm going to stir this according to the directions. So my directions say three to five minutes, so I'm gonna do five minutes just to be sure. So I'm gonna go ahead and set a timer. Hey Google, set a timer for five minutes. Sure, five minutes, starting now. And at the end of this, we're gonna be ready to pour. Now the pouring time on this is 30 minutes, so I don't have to work all that quickly. I can spend a little time doing it. If I've miscalculated, I can make a little bit more, but I'm just going to stir this. I want to make sure I go around and get it where it touches the edges of the container so that every part of this gets incorporated. This is the one area where an error would be fatal to the project. You may be asking, how did I determine the correct amount of resin parts to add for this project? And I don't really have a good answer for you. You could figure out the cubic volume of your particular molds, but of course I'm putting rocks in there, so I have no idea what the displacement is going to be. But I can tell you from the experience that I've had so far that it goes further than you think it's going to go. So I know I can make more, but I can't unmake it, so I'm going to go conservative. Okay, my timer has gone off and I've been stirring it for five minutes. It's got, it doesn't have a ton of bubbles. It's a little bit, a little bit cloudy, but that's to be expected, looks great. So now all I have to do is pour it into these molds. I'm going to start with the large one, I think here. And I'm just going to slowly pour it in here because it's gonna take a minute for it to go down in there in between the various rocks and fill up, fill those little pockets. One thing you'll want to consider is you don't want the bare rocks up tight against the walls of the silicone because uh, you want the silicone on the outside. So what I'll do is usually just kind of not really give it a stir but kind of adjust the rocks a little bit so I'm, I feel certain that I'm getting a little bit of 
epoxy behind them as well. And that there's no air pockets. And again, I'm just making sure that it's not tight against the outside or that there's a little bit of epoxy, a little bit of resin against the outside all the way around. All right, so let's move on to the rock ball, the little ball that does not have a two part. And I've filled it most of the way, but you wanna leave enough space that you can pour the resin in there. I've made the mistake of getting rocks too close here and then there's really no room to pour the resin in. So let's see if we can get this one filled. And I feel a couple of the rocks trying to poke into the side. I would really like this to be as round as possible so I wanna make sure that I'm not allowing them to do that. And you'll have to go real slow with this. You'll probably have to do multiple pours because it takes a bit for the resin to get down in there. We're going to spray them with alcohol. I've got a little bit of resin left, so I don't want to waste that. So I'm going to end up probably coating, coating some rocks and just letting them sit on the silicone. But before I leave these for the overnight, I'm going to spritz some with a little bit of alcohol. And what that does is it brings all of the bubbles to the surface and or it, it eliminates the bubbles that are on the surface. And it's really, it makes a significant difference. And now if you can see any bubbles, like I see one in there, you can go ahead and try to encourage them to come up. They will come up over time. So just because I spritzed this now doesn't mean I won't see more bubbles later. So I actually will come back in a while and spritz it again as it's curing if I see more bubbles that have come to the surface and they haven't popped on their own. I filled it a little, I try to fill it a little beyond the crust of the hole and that's going to go down a little bit as they cure and it'll sink a little bit and then when I come back tomorrow and fill the tops of these I'm probably going to put a little capper on that one just a little bit more resin so that I don't have like a little divot or a little concave area. All right we'll let these rest for whatever it says on the directions before we work on the second part. And I'm gonna say that's gonna be almost 24 hours before I'd be ready to put the next part on. Okay, it's been about 18 hours and I'm pretty satisfied at how these have set up. You don't wanna really rush that process because the resin will create quite a bit of heat as it's curing and you don't want uh, a lot of remelting and mess. Uh, also, that much resin altogether all heated up at the same time uh, is not good. So let them cure until they're nice and firm. You wanna have that off of the sides of the silicone mold when you're ready to meet the two parts. This small one did in fact settle a little bit and there's just a little bit of a divot in there which I don't like. And so I'm gonna go ahead and refill that hole at this time. Okay, so now I'm filling the tops here with rocks, but I'm not gonna to put too many in there because the bottoms are mounted up a bit and I wanna make sure that I can get 
this to close all the way. So it's pretty much the same process as before. We're just going to pour the resin in slowly. It'll take a while to get down to all the rocks. You can see the little bubbles coming up here and they will come up from those little gaps in there. So it's good to get as many of those to come up as possible. All right, once those are nice and full and I've topped off this other one, I'm gonna take my alcohol again and spritz it and that's gonna kill, kill the bubbles on the top. And as I did yesterday, I'm going to come back. I'm going to keep checking on it every so often to just see if there are any bubbles that have come up to the top. And if so, I'm going to try to get them to release. Sometimes they get, they come right up to the edge and just get stuck under there and just need a little encouragement to come out. There we go. Come on out. And then you can kill them with alcohol. And it's okay for the, the resin to be mounted up a little bit because it's going to sink over the course of the curing period. And then I'm going to come back and just cap them off again. We'll come back to this in another 18 to 24 hours. Okay, it's been 18 to 24 hours. After about 10 hours, I went ahead and filled in the little divots at the top so that I don't have little concave areas. And it's ready to unmold these and see what we've got. To unmold them, you're simply going to loosen the top part and release it and release the bottom and here's our first sphere it's got a little bit of a bump at the top here we're going to scrape that off a little bit of a flange here on the side but not much overall beautiful all right let's see what else we've got here next one is this one it's okay to wrestle these molds they're pretty sturdy look at that beautiful jasper in there And the, some pudding stone too. Okay, we've got a small one. Look at that gorgeous concretion in there. That is absolutely beautiful. I did, while I was topping them off, try to use one of this little tiny, tiny one, so we'll see how that one came out. It should be interesting. Now this one, this one is harder to get out for sure. So the first thing you want to do is kind of go around it and loosen up the silicone. You can see now that it's not, you can see when it's not touching the sides anymore or when it's loosened up. And then you're really going to just have to rough house it to kind of get it started. There we go.
Now in order to take care of these little flanges that occurred when it seeped a little bit out of the mold, they should just come right off. But you can alternatively use a craft knife to just carefully scrape them off. You can also use an, a little emery stick, but just be careful you don't really want to mar the surface, the beautiful shiny surface of your ball. But those ridges really bother me, so I always work to get those off. You might be left with a little bit of a noticeable ridge when you file that off. And you can take a little bit of clear nail polish and put it on there or dab on a little bit more epoxy if you mix up a little bit more, or even a basic craft glaze or varnish will work. You just got a tiny, tiny little line there, and if you don't want it to be visible at all, then you can use those methods. And it's gonna be the same if you have any imperfections. And then also for that little top bump, I usually very carefully cut it off with a craft knife. Again, this is my preference because I prefer not to have a divot. If you would prefer that, then having to cut off a little end piece. It's completely how to you, up to you how you create these. I'm just going to file that down a little bit and I'll probably pop a little bit of nail polish on there just so that it's not noticeable at all because I really want my spheres to be perfectly round without anything that catches your eye so that you can just enjoy the beauty of the rocks inside. So just file that down till it feels nice and smooth and then finish it off with a little dab of nail polish or more epoxy. And there you have your resin stone spheres. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. If you would like to follow along on our adventures, see where we're going next, where we might be finding treasures along the way, feel free to subscribe. We are Outer Limits Open Road on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. See you down the road. We could get out of town See the beautiful world around Wanna see it now Pack our bags and get in